So hello everyone, my name is Nate. I am the Marketing and Programs Director for the South Lake Chamber of Commerce. Um, it is a pleasure to be here today. Um, along with me, I do have um, Matt Wood, who is the CEO and founder of um, Suit and Green um, Consulting. Um, today's uh, presentation is brought to you by the South Lake Chamber um, and also with uh, Suit and Green Consulting and for the hiring, hiring from the military community. And so before um, I, you know, formally introduce uh, Mr. Matt Wood. I would like to read his bio um, so that you all get familiar with him and, and all that, that good stuff. So um, here we have uh, Matt Wood is the CEO and founder of Student Green Consulting. He served for over 21 years in the United States Army in a variety of leadership, operations, training and development and project management roles in the United States and around the world. He also cut his teeth in the private sector, working for a Fortune 100 company in sales, business analytics, and workforce management roles. It was during his post-military career that Matt was introduced to the knowledge gaps that exist between the military community and corporate America. In particular, the translation of military experience and capabilities when it comes to civilian jobs and hiring. Now he looks to help bridge that gap and set companies for, up for success by showing them how to effectively hire, engage, and retain people from the transitioning ser service member, veteran, and military spouse communities. So without further ado, I'd like to you know, hand the computer over to uh, Mr. Matt Wood um, for today's webinar. Well, thanks, Nate. I appreciate that. Uh, very warm welcome. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Nate said, I am Matt Wood. And uh, I'm the self-stylized chief headache producer for Suiting Green Consulting. So, um, as you said, I have 21 years of military experience, uh, all that on active duty um, in a, a variety of different roles. And I feel that's what helps me kind of bring that experience uh, to organizations. I also have the benefit of being a military spouse as well. My wife is a former Marine. Uh, she will be very testy if I were to say ex-Marine because she can say that is, there's no such thing as that. Um, so I get the, the veteran and military spouse experience, and she has that as well. So that we bring both of those experiences to the, to the table when we talk to companies and show them how that we, how we can help them become better organizations. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, well, we can yeah. kick into this yeah. little, uh, go ahead and share the screen here. All right, so um, as you can see right there, our, our mission, our, our goal really is to help companies go from being military friendly to military ready. Um, and the difference is there are so many companies out there talking about how they are military friendly, they wanna hire from the military communities. Um, but what I see a lot of is with these companies, they don't know exactly how to utilize those, those uh, veterans, the military spouses to best of their capabilities. So they stay in that military friendly when they actually realize how best to utilize the experiences, skill sets, and knowledge that these individuals bring to their organizations, then they've actually made that transition into the military ready uh, status, uh, which is what I like to help companies reach. So, uh, so oh, a little too fast. So we'll kind of talk about what what I'm going to touch on here, uh, go over our mission a little bit, the 200,000 available hires, which is a, a great number to look at and something that a lot of companies don't even realize uh, are key company services and then summarize all of it a little bit. So um, we are here to assist companies with understanding the benefits of hiring from the military community by translating military experience and skills into corporate friendly terms. Um, one of the examples I like to use is, is in the military, there's, they have their own separate language. Uh, and I saw this very, uh, very eminently during my career. Um, I spent three years as an army recruiter in Northern Virginia. And at one point, uh, as I was coming into that, that role and that job, I had to go up to Fort Meade, Maryland and talk with a, a master trainer up there just to get an idea of things. So my background at the time, I was coming from 82nd Airborne Division high speed infantry guy, fall out of airplanes for a living. And I go up here and this guy 
uh, he's talking about things and he says, hey, look, if you do this and this wrong, you're going to end up with an RI. Well, to me, as, a, as an infantryman, an RI meant ranger instructor. So I'm thinking, okay, if I do this and this, they sound really bad. But that means I'm going to have a ranger instructor come up and yell at me or something. And I was like, well, you're going to send a ranger instructor up here from Fort Benning? He's like, no, it's a recruiter in propriety. So it, it was one of those things of trying to understand that there is that different language, even within the military, things that, that we just don't understand. So, um, you know, from service to service and even within services themselves, there can be a need for a kind of where's a red, Rosetta Stone? And that's where shooting green really comes into play. We do serve as your Rosetta Stone for the companies that, um, that are trying to hire from the military communities or that want to hire from the military communities. And they get these resumes um, that ideally have been kind of civilianized, but may not be able to make a whole lot of sense or they may look at it and say, oh yeah, here's a veteran cool uh and you know maybe they've got 10 years but we don't know if they've got leadership experience we don't know if they can build teams and things like that so that's where we come in and we help out um, we're able to say yeah just just by looking at it i can look at a, a period of time that somebody served in the military and say yes they're going to have some of these skills that are going to make sense for your organization project management team building leadership organizational development things that are hard to find, hard to train, but service members leave the military with these things. And then, you know, looking at military spouses where uh, they may put their careers on hold while they're moving all over the world with their service member. And they may have all this experience, all these not the skills and knowledge, but they're working in minimum wage entry level jobs uh, because it's what they can find. Or if it's like the case of my wife, where she moved around and for three years living with me couldn't work anywhere because we were in a foreign country and there were no openings for her because she didn't speak Finnish, she didn't speak Swedish, but she spoke English. And while that was great living in Finland, you still needed to be able to speak Finnish or Swedish to be able to operate. There. So um, having us as a Rosetta Stone, we're able to come in and show you exactly how to make sense of those skills and experiences that are going to benefit your organization. Um, then we also talk about the benefits that come with hiring from within the military community that companies may not be aware of either. Things like uh, work opportunity tax credit, which can get organizations up to $9,600 per hire if they're veterans uh, coming out of the military. And that's something that I can't think of any company that's not going to want an extra $9,600 in tax right. credits. I mean, <laughs> if they true. if they don't, I mean, I will be more than happy to help you find ways to spend that money. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, I look at it as, okay, if I come in and I help a, a company get a better understanding of how to hire from the military community, spouses and veterans, and they utilize this and they take advantage of the work opportunity tax credits to do that, by hiring one veteran, that's essentially paid for me to come in and help your organization right mm -hmm. off the bat. That's all it takes. One veteran hired by your company using work opportunity tax credits pays for my services. Plain and simple. And I, I mean, that's kind of a no brainer for, for a lot of organizations to be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do what we do by offering workshops. I come out, I work with your company. I can do it in person. I can do it virtually. Um, I've got, you know, access to all the, you know, the virtual assets that are really prevalent, especially after this last year, uh, Zoom, Teams, Google Meet, whatever it may be, um, I can do that, I can come on, I can do the one-on-one -on -one workshops, I can do uh, training with your, your human resources folks, your talent acquisition personnel, um, hiring managers, even your, your executives, because obviously we all know with companies, the executives are where the buck stops and they've got to be the ones that buy off on everything. So I like talking with the executives because it gives me that opportunity to say, Hey, look, these are the benefits that come with bringing me in to show your company how to hire from this community. Um, we also work to help build your employee resource groups. If companies have them, um, they may not be utilizing fully or they may not know how to really get individuals involved in those so that 
it becomes something robust that makes the organization better and helps to stand out to other service members or other military spouses that are looking for positions and looking for companies that are military ready. If a company doesn't have something like this and you know, a larger company and they say, well, yeah, we've got some employee resource groups. Well, I can help you come in and really strengthen those up a little bit more, make them a little more robust, help you discern, you know, working with your HR folks, how to best make uh, an employee resource group that works for uh, military um, that's bringing in employees that are veterans, employees that are uh, military spouses or uh, employees that are military friendly. Maybe they've got somebody in their family that served in the military, but nobody immediately in their, you know, their family dynamic, but they're, they're advocates of the military. They're, they're friends of the military and they want to know a little bit more and they want to be part of this and help move people into the, the organization and make that transition uh, smoother, which is ideally what a veteran resource group would do in an organization. Uh, because I won't lie to you that the transition out of the military, especially for a lot of people, is a very rough one uh, for six to nine months after leaving the service because it's you're slowing down how you do things. And that's, I mean, that no offense to any company. I mean, there are companies out there that are going a million miles a minute but to come out of the military where your operational tempo is go, 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 go all the time. And to not have that um, right away can be tough. Um, uh, and going into a new organization where you don't have that camaraderie that you're used to, um, being around like-minded individuals or you know, people that have similar experiences can be tough. Um, it makes that transition a little bit harder, uh, which is something I went through. Uh, when I made my transition out of the military, it was, it was tough. Uh, I wasn't used to people that were, I'll get to that. Or, you know, it's not that important right now. We'll get to that later on. Uh, I'm used to, all right, hey, cool. That, we got to do this. Let's go make it happen. And so that's where your employee resource groups can really come into play um, and help make that transition smoother uh, because you can bring people in that, that partner up with new uh, military hires and they're able to share those experiences and kind of mentor them along as they move into the company, sponsor them when it comes to um, advocating for uh, promotions or other positions in the organization. And we talk about the available talent that's out there. So every single year you have over 200,000 service members transitioning out of the military active duty, National Guard, Reserve, whatever component. 200,000 people that are looking for that next challenge. They're used to being high performers. They're used to being part of organizations that have a, a purpose behind it, and they look for that. And a lot of organizations, when they're saying, yeah, we're looking for people. We're wanting to hire quality employees. military is a great place to look for. And, you know, if they're not looking in that direction, if they're not looking at, you know, military career fairs or um, posting to job boards that uh, military personnel see as they make, as they begin their transition, they can be missing out on quality talent to help take their organization one step further. And those are some of the things that I talk about when I, I work with companies is showing them that, hey, there are a lot of avenues to approach when it comes to hiring from the military community. That being said, I do not have the bandwidth to be able to do staffing, which I know a lot of people would just be like, hey, we want to hire, help us out and, and get us these people. And I'd love to be able to do that for every single person, but I just, I, I don't have the capability to do that. So I don't want to put that out there as, as saying that, yeah, oh yeah, I'll help you get these people. I can show you how to get to them. Uh, it's the old, you know, uh, take a horse to water, uh, but I'll teach you how to fish. Uh, from there on, it's, it's up to you. Uh, so, but knowing where to look and how to do that, I can help with uh, some other aspects though. When it comes to what the 
transitioning service members, the veterans are saying, the, the military spouses. Um, these are some of the things that we've seen uh, and that we've heard from the community when they are looking for that next challenge for them. Um, a lot of times, uh, as you see there, you've got people that are coming out, they're, they're putting their resumes out there. And everybody knows, any, anybody that's a hiring manager, recruiter, anybody with an HR knows, a resume doesn't capture every single thing a person can do. Um, there's so much more to these people. But that's also another thing that Student Green is able to do as our, uh, as being your Rosetta Stone, we, we understand that these individuals have a lot more than three or four bullets under a job description. Um, there's a lot to it and it's translating some of that, being able to extract that from them, uh, from those resumes, just by looking at them or even helping out when it comes to uh, interview questions. You know, we can be that safe space for companies that are really wanting to hire from these communities, but aren't sure what, you know, solid questions may be for them, you know, uh, and then can we ask them about, you know, moving around a lot or, you know, the, the big no-no question is, have you been to combat and have you ever shot it? But, which, you know, it, it sounds silly and it, it's crazy, but that's, those are questions that sometimes get asked. And if you're able to, to sit down and we, we sit down, we've got that safe space for a company to say, yes, ask whatever questions you want of about the military or what the transition process is like or anything like that, then it, it allows them when they go in and they do these interviews or the phone screens or whatever they're doing to bring people into their company. Now they have a better understanding. All right, these are questions that we can ask that will draw out those experiences and that that skill set that we're looking for that maybe we're not able to pull out of from a resume. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to make sure that companies are not underemploying people um, and that they're actually utilizing the skills and experiences that they bring. This is a big question that companies are going to want to know. What's in it for us? Where is the benefit to us from hiring these people other than getting another worker? Well, Uncle Sam, along with state and local governments, have a lot of incentives out there for businesses to hire from the military communities. Um, I talked about it earlier, the work opportunity tax credits. I mean, it's not just limited to the military community with veterans. There are a ton of different um, qualifiers for these tax credits. So a veteran alone may earn a company $9,600 in tax credits just on their veteran status. But if they've got other quali qualifiers, they could be bringing in even more than that to an organization. So you could have potentially $12,000 in tax credits just on one individual, depending on what their background is. Uh, there are also opportunities for companies to test drive service members. And this comes through the Department of Defense Skill Bridge Program. We all know if we go out and we want to buy a vehicle, we're not just going to go up to the dealership and be like, that's the car I want. I'm going to buy that one right off the lot and take it home. Right. Um, if you're doing that and you've got the money to do that, I, there's a couple of cars down at the local dealerships I'd be interested in. Um, and by all means, take me with you. I'll help you take one right off the lot. But you want to go down there, you want to test drive. You want to make sure that it's going to, function the way you want it to. It's got the, the bells and whistles that you want or whatever it is you're looking for in that vehicle. Um, the skill bridge program that the Department of Defense has established allows you to do that with a transitioning service member where you as a company have 180 days or up to 180 days to really test drive this individual. You get to see how well they perform in your environment, in your office settings, in your business. You get to see how well they interact with everybody else in your organization. They get the benefit of getting experience on the outside, outside of the military, so that they're not just coming into a company blind. Um, the, the service member also has 
the ability to really get to know an area, they get to know um, a, uh, a business and an environment so that they can make a, a solid decision on, yes, this is absolutely something that I want to be doing. Uh, I, I feel a calling to do this. Uh, the other benefit to it, along with, you know, aside from being able to test drive this individual, is it costs companies nothing. Doesn't cost them anything to sign up for the programs, and it costs them nothing when it comes to paying these individuals, because these service members are still on active duty. So Big Uncle Sam is still paying their salary for those you know, potential six months, along with all their benefits and everything else. So a company really is in a win-win situation with this. And at the end of that time period, that that program then the decision is left to the company. Do they hire these individuals or do they say, we appreciate it. Um, we just, we don't have the bandwidth to bring you in or, or whatever. There's no obligation for them to hire uh, those skilled bridge individuals. It's encouraged, but there is no obligation for them to do that. Uh, so something that they can, they can look at as an opportunity. And we show you how to get involved in the skill bridge program uh, talk a little bit more about some of the benefits that come with that, along with other opportunities, whether it's apprenticeships or, uh, or internships, uh, fellowships, and, and whatever that are out there that can be an incentive for a company to look at bringing service members into their organization. And, and they're working right now to uh, take that skill bridge program and open it up to the military spouse community as well. Uh, we also talk about how easy it is to hire uh, military spouses that may not be living in the United States. Maybe they're overseas with their, their service member and they're looking for an opportunity with a company that has remote only jobs or has flexible jobs or remote jobs. Um, and they can come work for your organization. Benefit is it costs you nothing other than your normal hiring paperwork. Well, if it takes an hour to process a new hire for something like that, that's all it's going to take for somebody that may be living in South Korea to start working for your organization because they're still considered American citizens. They're considered just like they're living back here in the U S while physically they're, they're overseas. So these are huge opportunities for companies to really get their, their feet in and, and start working with um, the military spouse community and the veteran communities. Uh, again, as far as what we can do for companies, we do our workshops, we help with resume translation, we talk to your employee resource groups. Um, we can offer job postings for companies that are wanting to hire for roles um, and then Pulling all of that together, along with talking about the benefits that come, is we're here to make your company better. That's something that every service member that leaves the military has as a mindset. It's okay. I came into an organization uh, with the uh, the charge of trying to make it better when I when I leave. Service members and military spouses want to do this for companies. They want to come in. They want to make a difference not only in the world, but they want to make a difference for the organization that they come to and they want that company to be better. So that's what they're trying to do for your company. Uh, there are a lot of companies out there, uh, as, I, as I stated at the beginning, that have the right intentions. They just don't have the knowledge base to, to really employ from this community uh, effectively. They can do it, but they got to be, uh, we want them to be effective in how they're doing it. Um, I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence with the resumes. We all know hiring managers and HR folks and, and talent acquisition professionals. They know how to read resumes, but it's a matter of being able to extract information from uh, a military resume that may not stand out. Uh, so that's what we want to try to help you understand there. We also want to take a look at how Hollywood kind of doesn't really do us, uh, the military community, a, a, a huge favor. Uh, there are a lot of military movies out there, uh, especially nowadays with the, the, the war on terror, where service members get out there. They're now veterans. They come home. They're 
they saw something traumatic, they went through a traumatic experience, they come home and now something happens and they're on a vendetta or they've got super violent PTSD. And that's not always the case. I mean, that is a very, very minute uh, percentage of the military that ends up with that, those, those issues. But we have resources for those individuals. So um, we don't, we're not going to ask you to go through basic training. We're not going to put you in front of a drill sergeant, even though I was one. Uh, we're not going to set you up there and make you do push-ups. We want you to, you know, uh, at least have a basic knowledge of what it means to, uh, for somebody to be in the military, what, it, what it's like for them and what that transition process is. Uh, we're not going to make you subject matter experts. We don't expect anybody to be, but we do want you to have at least that basic level of understanding so that you can be an advocate for these, uh, these individuals and bring them in on board and actually hire them uh, effectively. Um, as I mentioned uh, just a little while ago, when veterans come into your organization, military spouses, they want to make your company better. They don't just want to come in and, and you know, turn a wrench and that's all they do all day long. Um, and there are ones that will want to do that, but they do want to come in. They want to make that difference. They want to help out. You know, they want to make you a better organization. So as it states right there, our efforts are currently focusing on companies uh, who want to hire this from this talent pool. You know, there are ones out there that are, everybody's looking for talent. Um, and like the old Saturday Night Live skit goes, it's kind of like looking for a wub in all the wrong places, as, <laughs> as Eddie Murphy liked to say. Uh, we want to help you find the right hires in the right places and get them into positions where you as a company and the individual are going to prosper. Um, and it's going to be a beneficial uh, relationship. It's time to hire smarter. And, and really the best way to do that is, in my opinion, from the military community, whether it's you know, hiring transitioning service members, getting them into the skill bridge program, going through uh, hiring veterans, hiring military spouses. There are a lot of ways to do that. And then that is how you can reach us. Uh, I am available I'm all over uh, social media. Um, I'm not TikTok famous, so don't look <laughs> for me there. But I am on shooting. Uh, I am on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm out there. I'm, I'm there to help. Uh, the old saying was, we're from the government. We're here to help. Um, I'm from shooting green and I'm here to help. Um, but yeah, feel free. Um, reach out to reach out to me at any point. Um, so we're here. We want to make your company a better place. Uh, we want you to be military ready. We don't want you to be just military friendly. Stop that. Well, I think that that was great. I mean, I do have, you know, just a couple questions. Sure. Just to kind of, you know, help with, you know, the individuals will be reviewing this webinar in the future. Um, so can you just explain to us, uh, why, what, what inspired you to come up with the name Suit and Green Consulting? That's where that come from. That's a really good question. So, um, it really comes from the fact that in the military, mm -hmm. uh, as I came up through the, the the service for over 21 years, I was always wearing some form of green uniform, mm -hmm. and it's kind of uh, was across the services up until recently when the Navy decided they wanted to wear blue uniforms, which I never understood because if they fell off a ship, they're in the middle of the ocean in a blue uniform. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand the sense of that, but you know, yeah. hey, I didn't make that decision. That was echelons above reality for me there. Um, but uh, it's it's that whole coming out of wearing a green suit into a business suit, essentially. That's good. Um, not every job is going to be a business suit, but it's that whole thought process of, hey, we want to suit these green suitors. Cool, cool. That's really cool. I think that that's um, that's an intelligent way. I know a lot of times um, what inspires me is always asking people, like, why did you come up with the name? Because it's very common in business where people, you know, associate their business with their the name of like their name. You know, right? Yep. My name is Nate Edmund. You know, law firm, or whatever. Right. Um, and so, student green. When you see something that's a little bit um, that doesn't really tie into the person's first and or last name, 
you know, finding out the why. And um, I think that that makes perfect sense, especially with your background and what you've come from. Um, can you tell us what inspired you to start Student Green Consulting? Like, what did you what did you see um, in when you came out of the military? What did you see that was like, you know what? The military community doesn't have a liaison to connect them um, with the right people that ask them the right question to review their um, resumes. Because I know even in my career, you know, when you feel like you have a solid resume, but people that don't read it because they may not necessarily know that specific industry that you may have been a part of. So, yeah. So um, one of the things that I saw as I was making that transition out and then even after having been out of the military for mm -hmm. a year or so, was there a lot of companies that would look at my resume um, and, and at the time I had no college degree. I had a bunch of college credits, but I had no degree mm -hmm. and they would see my resume and they just be like, well, oh, no, no degree on there. So yeah, we don't want to, we're not going to look at you or even give you a second thought for um, any real solid positions within our organization other than entry level. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I have 16 years of military leadership experience. Now, granted, I don't, I never once expected to walk out of the military and into a CEO position. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I created one for myself. So, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's just the way that worked, but I never expected to walk into a company and say, Hey, cool. I've got 16 years of leadership experience. I want to be a manager in your company. Mm -hmm. But I was hoping that organizations would look at my resume and say, Oh, military experience, um, has to have been in some kind of leadership role. Let's see how well he can do in a position that's got some responsibility. Um, and that was all I was really asking for was, hey, give me an opportunity to come in and, and show that I can handle responsibility that comes from, you know, a, a junior leadership role, entry level leadership. Um, let me learn the, the, the ropes of your organization so that I can show you I can be an asset to your company. Mm -hmm. uh, and then seeing uh, as I move through uh, different roles uh, after the military, it was like, okay, I moved into a position. I, I was there for six months before they said, hey, we want to promote you. You've got leadership. You, mm -hmm. you know how to train people. You're, you're good at putting together a solid team. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. that was all part of that, that should show on my resume. But it's you know, I, that's what I brought out of the military. I, it just it, it amazed me that company say that. Like, wow, we're amazed you can do all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of. Kind of had to, you know, yeah. in all different environments. So that was, that was where I said, all right, there is that knowledge. Companies don't understand that. They don't, they're not able to look at a resume and just be like, oh yeah, okay, mm -hmm. with X amount of years, this, this, and this. Um, and, and and in talking with a, a neighbor, he dealt with people who were trying to hire from the military, and they said, yeah, we've hired, you know, all these veterans, but they don't have any leadership abilities. And I was like, well, well how many years in the military do you have? Well, four. Okay, that's that's part of the problem. Yeah. Typically, after four years, if somebody gets out and goes to work somewhere else, they don't have a lot of leadership experience. Sure. They've, you know, they know how to be led and they know how to really accomplish tasks, mm -hmm. but they may not be put in leadership roles. So it's being able to look at that and say, okay, yeah, you know, six years, yeah, at that point they've been in a leadership role at least once. Mm -hmm. Anything more than anything more than six years. You're definitely looking at somebody that's got leadership uh, experience and, and knows how to work with people. So um, that was really kind of the, the catalyst for it, where I decided that there is that knowledge gap. I saw that gap and I just said, hey, I need to, somebody's got to step in and fill this. Uh, there are a lot of great organizations out there trying to help the, the transitioning service member community and, and right. the spouses, but there's nobody out there on the, the other side working with the companies to say, hey, let's get you ready right, right so that you're able to take these people and, and really say yeah cool you're not only a veteran and working at security you're a veteran who has experience and we're starting you off and we're getting you into you know getting your feet wet and in, in some leadership roles mm -hmm. so that we're actually taking advantage of the skills that you bring to us yeah so it was awesome um i think when especially when you brought up the the idea of like some of the questions that are being asked during these interviews i think that it's um it's very interesting because there is a little bit of, um, you know, a lot of people take this 
particular term and make it negative. But there's a little bit of ignorance that we, you know, yeah. civilians that haven't served the military that we don't have when it comes to the military. And I think that um, what you do, being able to bridge that gap in um, educating, you know, even, you know, individuals who may have, you know, went to school and studied, you know, how to recruit, you know, there's a different, you know, terminology and, and uh, conversation that's to be had when you're dealing with someone who's um, been in the service for, for quite some time. I, I mean, I, I, I'm reminded of when um, I had the opportunity to um, work with a lot of volunteers um, at, uh, it was called the, the, the Vietnam Moving Wall. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I had to work with a lot of the volunteers out there um, and scheduled a lot of the volunteers. But one of the main things when I was speaking with one of the veterans who were, um, they were an intricate part in putting on and, and bringing this wall into that community was um, knowing how to deal with those individuals who may still be mourning, you know, and how to approach them. You don't just come up and, you know, just say, hey, how's it going? You, you have to be very gentle. And so there's a sense of education that has to happen that, that us as civilians need to, you know, kind of be aware of and how to deal with the military because it, you know, there's a lot of situations where they are, there's a little bit more of a sensitivity that, um, you know, we have to have when it comes to dealing with those who, who protect and serve. Um, and so like um, one of the last questions that I have today is um, from the time that you've begun your uh, venture, your journey with Suit and Green Consulting, what would you say is your greatest or one of your greatest achievements um, from when you started your, uh, your company? Um, I would say one of the, the coolest things, and it, it's something that I always got whenever I would whenever I was in a teaching role uh, as an instructor, as a drill sergeant, whatever it was, was working with an organization and watching light bulbs come on. Like, oh, that's really cool. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Or um, that's good information to have so that I don't ask a question like, you know, asking a, a military spouse, hey, what does your husband do? What does your wife do? Why is it that you're, you know, you moved around 10 times over the last 12 years or whatever it is, you know, uh, you know having that, that knowledge, of, oh, there is a reason I probably shouldn't ask this question, but mm -hmm. just watching that light bulb comes on um, right. with, with any companies that I've, I've worked with has always been, um, that to me is always the best feeling of it is saying, oh yeah, now they have an understanding. Now they get it and it's, it makes sense to them. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any any time that I, I watch that light bulb come on, it's always cool. Yeah, that, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, um, like you said, I think you know some of the biggest things to take away from you know today. It's not only you know as we know that uh, um, student green consulting um, they offer a lot of workshops, um, a lot of opportunities to be able to educate your your staff, um, educate people, um, the people that that work and hire and bring in you know top talent, um, you know, uh, and being able to bring in. You know, an individual that serves in the in the U.S. military is um, would be something that's ideal, something that you should definitely consider, or at least you know, it, be aware of, so that when you are you know scouting and looking for another individual to fill a position or a hold, um, you know, I think that you know if you have the opportunity to get connected with uh, Matt Wood from uh, uh, Suit and Green Consulting, I think that that you should definitely take that opportunity. Um, and uh, you know, uh, everybody you know likes to get tax credits. So the $9,600 of tax credits, I think that that's something that was an eye opener for me because I was like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't know that, you know, and, um, and in my history of working in taxes, um, that's not something that we kind of dove into that, you know, that yeah. there's a $9,600 tax credit. And when I mean working in taxes, I didn't actually prepare people's taxes, but, um, you know, being in that industry for a little bit. Um, so I think that that's 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 a huge um, you know gamer right there because you know being able you know to especially with a small business a small business needing you know additional tax credits to continue to function um, within your company and bringing on someone who can also meet your needs um, is something that's essential for your business. So definitely connect with um, with Matt Wood at your earliest convenience. Um, Matt, if you want to just go ahead and give them your credentials one more time on how they can get it connected with you and then yeah, absolutely. You know, right. I think if I can yeah, go ahead and share that right there. that back up. 
there we go. Um, that's uh, that's how you can reach me. Uh, my office phone uh, is is actually a Google Voice, so don't don't be too scared about that. But uh, that is another way to get a hold of me. Uh, my cell phone. Uh, you can reach me uh, by email, company website, LinkedIn is uh, that's the company site. I am also pretty active on LinkedIn, uh, and then our Facebook site. So. I realize that LinkedIn, I can get people during the day, mm -hmm. but the people that I'm trying to reach, they all got to go home at some point. And yeah. we all know we want to share what's going on with, with family and friends that are around the country. So sure. Facebook's out there too. So uh, we're all over the place. Awesome. Well, you all, thank you so much for um, watching this webinar today. Um, we will you know, go ahead and uh, have this opportunity um, in more instances and more cases. So um, if you want to go ahead and visit us at um, southlakechamber-fl.com, you know, please go ahead and, you know, uh, visit us for more webinars, more opportunities. Um, if you'd like to schedule an opportunity to also set up a webinar to um, educate, um, you know, the South Lake community on the industry that you operate in, you know, just go ahead and reach out to myself or either Shahanas as well. Um, so you all have a wonderful day. And um, Matt, thank you so much for everything. So we appreciate you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you My for your service as well. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. I'll leave that back.